the most important thing to understand thalassemia is the you know like basic differences between an alpha and a beta thalassemia so what is going to be an alpha thalassemia and what is going to be the difference in a beta thalassemia subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder the most important thing to understand thalassemia is the you know like basic differences between an alpha and a beta thalassemia so what is going to be an alpha thalassemia and what is going to be the difference in a beta thalassemia so in alpha thalassemia the problem is the pro i mean synthesis of the alpha chains and beta thalassemia the problem is the synthesis of the beta chains you know that we are not going to discuss anything more than that but what are the i mean in general what are the basic differences first thing if you ask me about the geographical differences alpha thalassemia is very common in the southeast asia and africa geography wise whereas beta thalassemia is also very uh, common in the mediterranean regions that is the reason why beta thalassemias are also referred to as something called a mediterranean anemia then you have something called a genetics genetics generally alpha thalassemia is due to gene deletions alpha thalassemia is due to gene deletions very commonly but there are a lot of other types i mean other uh, genetic reasons why you get an alpha thalassemia as well but gene deletions are the classic and the most common but if you ask me about beta thalassemia they are generally due to point mutations or frame shift mutations so that is the reason why you get a beta thalassemia commonly then whether they can present in fetal life or not fetal life can they present i am not telling all thalassemias present on fetal life but if few do present in fetal life but if they do present can alpha thalassemia present in fetal life yes certain types especially only one thing that will present in fetal life is that alpha i mean for all four gene deletion of alpha thalassemia which we'll discuss in some time so but yes still it can present but if you ask me whether beta thalassemia can present in fetal life or not answer is no they can't present in fetal life absolutely not possible the reason why they can't present in fetal life is because you know there are two hemoglobins in fetal life what you need is hbf in fetal life and you need hba in adult life if you ask me what do you mean by hbf it will be alpha 2 and gamma 2 chains if you ask me what about your uh, hba it is nothing but alpha 2 and beta 2 chain so this is what we call adult hemoglobin hba but one thing you can commonly notice is that both hbf as well as hba needs alpha chains so which means alpha thalassemia if it's sufficiently severe enough it can cause problems in both fetus as well as adult but your hba since you know like your beta chains are formed only in adult life it is not important in fetal life in fetal life your beta chains are not important which means your initially the gamma chains will be the one that is predominant alpha will be there in both adult as well as fetal this gamma becoming beta is complete by around 6 months of by around i mean 30 weeks of postnatal life that is around 6 months of postnatal period that is approximately 6 months postnatal or 30 weeks postnatal that is the time where your uh, gamma chain shift to beta chain will happen that is re- that is the time where your hbf will be completely taken over by hba so that is the idea so that is the reason why alpha thalassemia can happen in fetus as well as adult life but beta thalassemia can happen only after birth that is it can happen only 6 months after your child is born so that then only you can have a clinical manifestations from a beta thalassemia so that is a very important thing to understand